us a go here. He's over there. <laughs> I gave him up pretty fast. Thank you. 
Greet you again. Good morning again. We want to welcome you to our services today. We want to sing our praises to the Lord and let him know that we're here and we're happy to be here. So let's stand and sing the Star Spangled Banner. Al. Father God, today we give thanks for your presence in this house, giving thanks for Jesus Christ who gives us the Holy Spirit that lives in us, leads, and guides us. Lord, we thank you for our church, our church leadership, for those who work to further the cause of Christ, for our pastor who works daily through visitation, giving comfort in times of individual crisis, and through his hours of study to bring a message of hope and assurance to our congregation each week. And Lord, I am thankful for the faithful congregation, for without them, our work could not continue. So bless us now, Lord, with the love, your grace, and your mercy, and it is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you haven't, greet a neighbor.
Good morning. I'm reading from God's Word in the book of John, chapter 5, verses 17 through 24. But Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making him equal with God. And then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he seeth the Father do, for what things whosoever doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, heareth not the Father which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you, Brother Ron, and certainly uh, we are glad to see all of you here today. We welcome uh, those who are listening on our uh, Facebook page today and uh, looking forward to this service that we have together. Um, I don't often make you stand up extra, do I? Not much. Anyway, I'd like us to stand. I think it would be proper for us to show our pledge of allegiance to the flag at this time. And uh, uh, I think a very proper thing to do. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. I uh, actually, do you have that other video available, Jeff? We, we uh, I found this this morning. This was uh, uh, spoken by President Ronald Reagan some years ago. He was called the Great Communicator, and I want you to listen to this Memorial Day speech that he made. Uh, it's uh, available through YouTube, and we'll. Be, uh, be playing it for you. I think it's worth the time to hear this this morning. Jeff? If we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses, or stars of David. They add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Each one of those markers is a monument to the kind of hero I spoke of earlier. Their lives ended in places called Bella Wood, 
the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Port Chalk Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. Under one such marker lies a young man, Martin Treptow, who left his job in a small town barber shop in 1917 to go to France with the famed Rainbow Division. There on the Western Front, he was killed trying to carry a message between battalions under heavy artillery fire. We're told that on his body was found a diary. On the flyleaf, under the heading, My Pledge, he had written these words. America must win this war. Therefore, I will work, I will save, I will sacrifice, I will endure. I will fight cheerfully and do my utmost as if the issue of the whole struggle depended on me alone. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. It is a weapon our adversaries in today's world do not have. It is a weapon that we as Americans do have. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it. We will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans. I think that uh, speaks for itself, and today we honor those who have uh, stood and fought and, and uh, nobly gave their life for the cause. Uh, Brother David. When we pray, I ask that you pray for the family of Mario, Mario Leone, who gave his life to save my friend Pat Street. Amen. Amen. One of, the, uh, one of the unsung heroes I know, and, and uh, so many, many more stories. Um, and uh, I uh, may share with you here in a little bit a story of my father that uh, he told me so little. It just was a, a scar in life to know that he had to go to war and fought in the Korean War. But maybe I'll share just a little bit with you in a little while about that. But thank you, Brother David. And, uh, and our thanks to those who, who did serve. Uh, I know uh, this is to honor those who have, who were killed during the service. But um, I, I know uh, we have a few that were uh, that are here today that has served in our military, and uh, we we would like to uh, to recognize those real quick. Uh, Virginia, you served, correct? No. Why did I think you did? I don't know. I, I guess it. <laughs> Maybe it was the way you bossed Lonnie around. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> she was in the Secret Service. Okay, Ron Sheff, you served, correct? Yes. In the service. Who who else has served here? Uh, John, and and uh, and also uh, so so John Ansball served. And and what time did you serve, sir? Sixty-six through sixty-eight. Okay. Thank you, sir. And then right behind you, Brother Don. What, what time did you serve, sir? In 68. Okay. 58. 58. Okay, so you were right at the uh, tail end of the Korean War then. Okay. All right. My grandmother has three boys in the Second World War. Three boys. Wow. Three boys. Wow. And Steve, uh, Steve has served. Uh, and uh, what time did you serve? Okay, 1967 to 1970. Thank you for your service. He's going on an honor flight also. Yes, Steve is going on an honor flight uh, in June, I think it is. Uh, yeah, so that's great. We're glad to, glad to get to see that happen. Okay. 
So he and Lonnie were, were going to try to make that trip together, and Lonnie gets to see it from another view, a little higher up, and, and that's, uh, we thank him for his faithful service. And Maxine, I know your husband's birthday was yesterday, right? And he served in World War II, is that right? And uh, Korean War. Korean War, I'm sorry, Korean War. And he, uh, yeah, um, he, uh, he was a photographer and actually did some of the uh, uh, pictures that I, I think were se secret information anyway that was, uh, helped the allies during that battle and we thank him for that service. So anybody else that I've missed? All right, uh, yes, Jim, Jim. Okay. My uh, youngest brother served six years in Vietnam, mm. and my other brother served all over the country. Okay, all right. So we thank them for their service, and uh, and I'll just say real quickly, my, my father um, was in the Korean War, and uh, I, I remember him telling me just a few stories. Most of his stories were... Uh, he kept to himself. I just, I think it was a, a hard thing to remember some of them, but he remembered one where a whole uh, platoon went to take a hill, and it was all about taking hills in the Korean War, and anyway, I think that's 64 men at the, at the bottom of the hill, and there were five when they got to the top of the hill. And so that, that tells you the dedication and determination that was in our has been in our soldiers and continues to be. So our thanks to those who serve and gave, and certainly uh, we are here today just to recognize that. Ron Sanderson. I have two sons that served in the United States Air Force. All right, all right, amen. We thank you for that and for their service. And so a lot have served, a lot have given, and uh, you, you pray for Steve as he flies. I, uh, I, I have a couple of airbags in case you get sick that I can give you that will help you. So. Anyway, uh, you'll, you'll have a good time. That'll be, an, uh, that'll be a great flight, and I'm glad you get that opportunity. I, th I truly am. Well, thank you for allowing me to take just a few minutes, and, and, uh, and I think it's well worth our time just to share and remember and thanks, uh, give thanks to those who have, who have done so much for us. Uh, we want to remember in prayer today several special prayer needs. I'm not going to go through the entire list, but remember Jackie Clark. Uh, Jackie had been uh, stays usually in the winter in Florida. Got back to to uh, to uh, Mar or to Ohio and uh, fell and fractured her arm very severely, and probably is going to have to have surgery on it. So pray for Jackie Clark, one of our. Uh, members joined a, a couple of years ago, and just remember her in your prayers. And then uh, I know Gwen Cochran is having a uh, uh, MRI test this this Wednesday. Okay, and also uh, uh, Don is having a uh, a, um, a test or a MRI on uh, Thursday, I believe it is. So so pray for them as they face these uh, these things to. Uh, figure things out. Also, remember Becky Varner in your prayers. Becky, one of our members uh, who um, doesn't get to come very much because uh, has been on dialysis. She, she is down in OSU Hospital. Went down to uh, try to see her here a couple days ago, but anyway, uh, she is uh, having difficulties, uh, uh, is in uh, the uh, Winmore with Ruth, and uh, and because of these difficulties, she may be moving back permanently to a nursing home. So you, you pray for Becky uh, Varner, if you would. Any other prayer needs that we need to mention today? Uh, yes, Brenda? Um, I don't have the details. Uh -huh. My son just asked me to put Josh Rammer on the list. Okay, Josh Rammer? Brammer. Brammer. Okay. Remember Josh, Josh Brammer in your prayers. Any other prayer needs? Yes, Sharon? My neighbor, Jeff Cardwell, uh, who could be having his fourth surgery on his foot, and they keep taking toes off. Mm. Okay, all right. Okay, want to remember him, Jeff Cardwell, in your prayers. And uh, 
Also, if you would remember Angie McGraw, I know she's not been feeling well and seeing a doctor, so pray for her. Mary Alice didn't speak up before, but she lost a brother in the war. Ah, okay, Mary Alice, thank you for giving of your brother for, uh, for the supreme cause of freedom. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Uh, yeah, Brother David? Okay. Okay, Janet Lippert, remember her, and uh, Don Griffith, remember him, and, and also uh, 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 we want to remember uh, Gwen Cochran and those tests coming up. All right, well, let's sing our, pray, our prayer course today. It took a miracle of love and grace, and we'll sing that through twice. Second time through, if you have needs that perhaps you can't quite speak out but want to send to the Lord... Let's do that by uplifted hand through the second verse. It took a miracle. It took a miracle to put the stars in place. It took a miracle to hang the world in Face. But when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and grace. We'll sing that one more time. It took a miracle to put the stars in space. It took a miracle to hang the world in space. But when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and Heavenly Father, we sing because we know that a true miracle occurs each time a soul is saved and, and is joined into the family of God. Thank you for the shed blood of Christ that cleanses from all sin. And Lord, we thank you today that we are here in this place to remember, to account for, and just to be thankful for those who have given their all in the service for this country. So today, we ask, Lord, you would bless that we would remember and our thoughts would be that of a grateful nation. So, Lord, we pray today for these spoken requests as well as many unspoken held by uplifted hand. Today, Lord, might you just bless and watch over. Might your peace abide in the lives of those who need your special grace. And might we today just rejoice, Lord, that we are here and that we love one another, and that that love carries us on in service for you for another day. So Lord, today lead us and guide us, and might this time of prayer, Lord, be honored as we give them to you. We pray it in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Amen. Please remember to our announcements, our church council, uh, June uh, will be happening this week. June is going to be busting out all over. I think it's going to be a warm week. So uh, uh, we started off just a little chilly in our, our yard sale, but it was a beautiful, beautiful week for, for our yard sale and for our ladies' uh, food sale. And i uh, so thankful for that. And uh, I know we don't have exact amounts, but but uh, I think over a little over 4,000, Ray, for the uh, men's yard sale and for the... 4,100, okay, okay. Uh, anyway, amazing. Uh, and the ladies did an outstanding job. I think 1,200? Okay, all right, okay, all right. So anyway, they, they made some good money this week, and so we're thankful for that too. And thank you. Thanks to all the ladies and all the men who helped, and that was a lot, it took a lot of work to make this happen. And uh, by the way, we now have to put it all up real quick. <laughs> but uh, Ray? And we had some ladies that helped out on the early parts of uh, our 
Yes, that's what, yes. And, yeah, what... Yes, it was cold. Yeah. Yeah, they had to work to stay warm. That was the good thing. So. But anyway, but thanks to all who helped. John? You know, everybody knows that I've come in under glass. Uh-huh. I try to do my part, that's all I'll say, so anyway. We had a good time. It was a great time of fellowship, and both for ladies and men, and so we're thankful that uh, we, we got that opportunity, and it, was, uh, it will be a blessing to the church, I know. So uh, thank you so very much again for all who helped, uh, for those who gave uh, uh, and made donations, those who brought food in and, and helped with that. And, uh, but anyway, a lot of help made all of that happen, so thank you each and every one. Let me mention quickly just a couple of things. Our 24th Marion Baptist Association new member banquet is going to happen. We're going to have it out in the uh, shelter house. <laughs> the next thing we got to do is pack up all this uh, sales and put it away. But anyway, we're going to have it here and just try and keep the cost down for the uh, for the new members banquet. It's gone up and up and up. So we've dropped the price down to just uh, uh, $10, and uh, it, uh, it's going to include chicken, mashed potatoes, gravy, coleslaw, biscuits with butter and drinks, sorted desserts. And so uh, anyway, uh, we have tickets for that, and uh, we are always one of the top, if not the top, in, in attendance. So I hope you'll consider coming and going with us again. And uh, I've got 15 tickets here, and I'll get us more if we need more. So uh, Brother uh, Dave Lipper got those. But anyway, we're going to do that out in the uh, shelter house. It'll be at noon on the 24th of June. So we have a little bit of time. So, But uh, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll make it as cool as possible, but a, a little different type of uh, banquet this year. We're going to make it uh, a little shorter and a little uh, not with a lot of, uh, of other things going on. So I think you'll enjoy it. So come. Uh, we, uh, of course, for our new members, uh, you've got a free ticket just for uh, joining the church and being a part of Fair Park. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing a good crowd come. So Norma, will you help us with this? She, okay. I, 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 I had to kind of like this to get her to shake her head, but she did. She, <laughs> she said she would help. So anyway, thank you, Norma. Uh, so Norma Fuller, you see her for tickets, and uh, anyway, just ten dollars instead of. I think they were almost. Were they over? They were around twenty last time, I think. So so this is uh, anyway, and this is Lee's chicken. It's good chicken. So I, I uh, uh, one of our pastors, his uh, uh, sister uh, runs Lee's chicken. So I know. So I'm making a plug for Lee's chicken right now, aren't I? <laughs> but anyway, it'll be good. So I hope you can come. Remind also the men's uh, fellowship breakfast and ladies uh, that same day. So we'll see about the dates. We may be moving that a little bit just to accommodate for that. But uh, anyway, um, uh, a lot of, lot going on. Uh, we're moving on into summertime. And, and uh, so thank you for being here today and for uh, supporting the church and all you do. And uh, God is good. So we're thankful for that. Uh, remind you of the food pantry is still available and... Uh, the room uh, is still uh, there to, uh, to help, and we, uh, we're also helping um, uh, Marion uh, Senior Towers now, I think, with a little bit of food and, and some other things that we're doing. And our thanks to the ladies' uh, missionary group to help helping with that. And so, but anyway, thank you for, for your support of that. And with that, we want to have our ushers come at this time as we receive our offering. 
And again, thank you for giving and, and wanting to honor the name of Jesus Christ before all others. Brother Al. Today we bring these gifts and ties to you and pray, Lord, that thy will would be done as we use them to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand as we sing Rescue the Perishing. And let's just sing the first and the last verse, if that's okay. Or first and second, that's even better. <laughs> you don't have to do, you leave too many. <laughs> Ow. Thank you for your good singing. Pam Gruber is going to come and bless us with a special. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
I want to thank all the ladies that gave up their time. They baked, they worked, they donated. You know, we had a wonderful time. It's, it's a hard three days, but it's worth it. Thank you again. Thank you, Pam. Good song. It fits very well with what I want to share with you just for a few minutes today. <clears throat> I, I know <clears throat> this week has been hard on 
some that have worked hard here, and I appreciate your uh, taking an extra ibuprofen or whatever you had to use. So um, I, I heard this preacher say he was he had he had decided to retire from the ministry, and one Sunday he explained that decision to the congregation. He said, "Folks, I'm wearing two hearing aids, trifocal glasses." I have a partial plate, and sometimes I have to walk with a cane. It seems to me the Lord's telling me it's time to, re to retire. And after the service, a little white-haired lady walked up to the preacher and said, Reverend, you've misinterpreted what the Lord has been saying to you. He's not telling you it's time to retire. He's telling you that if you keep going, he'll keep patching you up. <laughs> so... Sometimes we need patched up a little bit, but that's okay. That's all right, huh? Well, we're here today, and, and certainly a special weekend, and, and uh, <clears throat> Memorial Day, that opportunity, I think, to remember those who have served our country. Originally, it was called Decoration Day, and I do believe it's our duty and our honor to remember those who have served, and especially those who have given their all, their life, for the cause of, of justice and peace in this country. And I would even say this, if you haven't visited a cemetery where some who have served lay there, I would encourage you to go pay your respects. I, I think that's a good thing to do. And I want to remind you just in that very same vein that the passage Brother Ron read for us today talks about who Jesus Christ is, about our life that we have in Him. And he talks about the matter of serving. And certainly we understand on Memorial Day there is that call of service. Uh, some who volunteered, some who were voluntold, I guess is the right way to say, to serve. But so it is in our branch, in being a Christian. And I want us to think today about us honoring the Lord, our commander, our, our captain, who took our place on the battlefield and how do we honor the Lord I hope we do it with who we are and what we what we have in our possession and and where we are so I want us to consider today just a few things I told Doug with all that we did today I said it's good I have a short message <laughs> in Psalm 51 verse 11 this is what the scripture says Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David prayed that prayer after a time of sin in his life where he had sinned with Bathsheba. And we know that in his life he got off track and was away from the things of God. And he realized after Nathan the prophet pointed his finger at him and after he had told him a story... And he said, David, thou art the man. And David realized his error of his ways. And I want to say this morning by starting, I really believe we serve God with our presence. You are here today, and I thank you so much. Some who are listening to us, uh, even as I'm speaking here out in, in uh, it used to be called Radio Land, I guess it's TV Land now. But I'm thankful for, for those who are listening but I think about us and who we are, that we are all sinners, and and only way we are saved is by the grace of God. You see, David understood the need of being in the presence of the Lord, and he realized he was out of fellowship. He was out of God's presence. And when we get to that place where we know we're not where we should be, that's when God has His way of using the Holy Spirit to draw us. And David prays this prayer, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He knew he needed the presence of God. And with that, I, I think of one songwriter who wrote, without him, I can do nothing. Thomas Kempis, who was a great Bible scholar, he said this, without the life, there is no living. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And we think as we visit cemeteries and we decorate those graves and we think about those who have lived and now have been caught away to the other side of where life is. And we know that God calls us while we are living to serve Him. 
And might I say to you today, we need Jesus daily in our lives. We need Him in our talk, and we need Him in our walk. And I hope we understand today, our lives are a, are a means of serving. I, I appreciate those who give and do and, and just want to do whatever they can. I know sometimes our bodies are feeble. Sometimes we are weak. Sometimes we can't do everything we want to do. But folks, we need to serve Him. I believe we need Him when the sun rises and when it sets. And then I believe this today. Service requires the presence of God. We need to know whom we're serving. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 19, it says, For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? That's our hope. That's our joy. And you see, the truth is, one of these days, God's going to give us a crown. He's going to recognize our service for serving Him. And it's due to the fact that as the blood of Jesus has saved us from our sins, we are made soldiers, every last one of us, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to understand this today. Our service is our best way to honor His name. We also serve the Lord with our faithfulness. In the book of Lamentations chapter 3, it says in verses 22 and 23, and I, uh, the book of Lamentations, we don't get into very much, do we? But it says there, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. You see, the good thing is, no matter where we're at, no matter the strife and strife, and struggle that we face in life, we have God's compassion upon us. It's His mercies that keep us going, that living another day. In verse 23 it says, They are new every morning, talking about His compassions. Great is Thy faithfulness. And we like to sing that song every once in a while about faithfulness. God wants us to be faithful to Him. You see, faithfulness is best seen as we reflect to Him uh, His faithfulness to us. It ought to just shine from our lives right back into Him. His blessings fall on us in so many ways. We think of salvation, of His daily supply of needs, of all that God provides us with, and we understand His blessings are a blessing to us. The truth is today, God keeps this planet turning and, and, and keeps us living. Every time your heart beats, that's because God has blessed you with life. In 100, Psalm 119, which is the uh, longest psalm in the Bible, did, I don't know if you knew, it's also the middle of your Bible. But in verse 90, this is what David said. Thy faithfulness, speaking of God, is to all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. I saw something the other day about how many things had been uh, told to us by scientists and others, and I know, I know there are problems in the world. I'm not, I'm not stupid today. Well, try not to be. I was trying to play stupid when Doug said, it's him, he's right there. I did play stupid for a minute. But anyway, but... <laughs> When, when, when we think about what God does, this world's still going. And in spite of science and, and the, their predictions of doom and gloom, God has kept this world going. And we understand the world abides, that's because of God. And when we look at our lives and how we respond to that, we understand that faith brings us into God's presence. We trust in Him. We believe He saves us from our sin. It enables us to continue on for Him. By the way, faith establishes our coming and going. When you get up in the morning, you know, God's given me this day. When you go to bed at night, you know, either if God takes us in our sleep, we're going to heaven to be with Him. If He gives us another day, we'll get up in the morning and live another day for Him. Never doubt God. Just simply put, never doubt Him. He is faithful. And then this third thought, and I'll be done. We serve the Lord with our lives. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45, there Paul writes, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam, and that's speaking of Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. And what God does for us is allowing us to live and count for Him. You see, our bodies are presented to God as we live to serve Him. Romans 12, one of the high marks to me of the book of Romans, begins by reminding us of who we are and how we live. There Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service? When you think about that, God is wanting you to know that He's taking care of you and providing for you and giving you what you need. Los Angeles motorcycle officer, his name was Bob Vernon. He saw a red pickup truck speeding down the road, went right through a stop sign. And the officer is thinking to himself, this guy must be late for work. So he turned on his emergency lights. He radioed that he was in pursuit. The pickup pulls over. The officer approached. And meanwhile, the driver that was in the car is thinking a whole other thought. He's thinking, ah, the cops already know. So he rested his hand on the same gun he had used a few moments before to rob a 24-hour market. There was a sack of stolen money sitting there beside him. And the officer walks up to his window and he says, May I see your... And he never gets to finish the sentence. The driver shoved his gun towards the policeman, uh, towards his chest and fired. And the cop, uh, the cop was knocked flat seven feet away. And a few seconds later, to the shock of the criminal, the officer stood up, pulled his service revolver, fired twice back into the vehicle and the first bullet went through the open window and the, the second one went through the door and, and, and ripped into the driver's left leg. And the thief screamed, don't shoot! And he threw his gun and sack of money out the pickup window. What had saved the policeman's life? It was Kevlar that he had on his chest and the bullets hit that Kevlar. And that super strong fabric used for a bulletproof vest only three-eighths of an inch thick, it stopped a bullet cold. Let me tell you, God provides for you. He gives you just what you need. And in Ephesians chapter 6, and go home and read that, the Bible instructs us as Christians to put on the full armor of God. You see, God gives us what we need to live another day, to serve Him. Don't worry about what is up ahead or what's happening. Now let me close by offering you one more story. There was a man by the name Jean, uh, Jean Dominic Bobby. He was a French journalist. He'd been editor in chief of a popular women's magazine called Elle, E L L E. You may remember that some years ago. He suffered a stroke in December of 1995. It left him unable to speak or to move but his mind was unaffected. The only part of his body that still worked was one eye that blinked. And so Bobby learned to communicate with that eyelid. He learned a signal for yes, a signal for no, and then a therapist began to recite to him uh, 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 the letters of the alphabet and he would, he would blink his eye for when he would say, yeah, that's the letter I want. And he as a, a, took that French alphabet and he would blink out as, as the, she would go down pointing through the letters and he wrote an entire book blinking with one eye. And the book is called The Diving Suit and the Butterfly and that was prior to his death in March 9th, 1997. It sold 146,000 copies. And what I'm saying to you today by closing is just this. God uses us even when it seems we only have a fraction of what He needs. When it seems like we can't do much, God can do so much with what you have. 
He wants us to serve Him. And as we're here on this Memorial Day, I hope our lives will count for Jesus, that we want to serve Him and live for Him, no matter how little it seems that we have. We're going to stand, and I'm going to just ask uh, uh, Al to play through one verse of Beyond the Sunset. We're not going to even sing it. And I want you to listen. I'll have Jeff put the words of the first verse up there on the screen for us. And we won't need the second verse, Jeff, all right? Just the first verse. But I want you to think about beyond the sunset. God gives us life, but He also promises life eternal in Him. And as we live today, might we desire to serve Him. Let's all stand as we close our service as Brother Al plays for us beyond the sunset. so much for being here. I, I failed to mention one thing, and uh, I'll do that before we close in prayer. Uh, the ladies group still has a few subs. Okay, subs, chips, and, and basically the, uh, the meal that was provided, I think uh, you're selling it for eight dollars? Oh, okay. Pardon for five. Okay, for five dollars. This is a deal. This is your Memorial Day deal of the day. But anyway, uh, Italian sub or ham and cheese sub, and uh, that includes chips and, and... I don't know what's really left. Okay, all right. But uh, anyway, uh, you don't have to worry about the restaurants today. We're going to take care of it. So anyway, five bucks will get you that. So there's some ladies out that will be ready to uh, help you with that and uh, just out in the uh, foyer. So hope you'll enjoy that. Remember, our new member banquet tickets uh, are available uh, as soon as I put them in Norma's hand here. And uh, so uh, anyway, uh, I hope you'll consider coming. And if we need more tickets, we'll make sure we get them. Thanks for being here today. Hope uh, you have a safe Memorial Day holiday and that, uh, that we just honor those who have served us and lived for us so very faithfully and well. Brother David Lippert, would you dismiss us in prayer, sir? Lord God, we thank you.